What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is the best budget backpacking gear awards of 2022 and into 2023. I got a prerequisite for you though, because um, some of the stuff is gear that has been budget backpacking gear for quite some time. And uh, I've enjoyed using it for quite some time. And so it's a little bit older, some of it than 2022, uh, but it's still, in my opinion, the best budget backpacking gear um, and it's sort of the biggest bang for your buck um, it's gear that i think is worth the purchase um, will keep you comfortable uh, is long lasting some of it some of it is just you know stuff you've got lying around your house for the most part so i can't really tell you if it's gonna be uh, long lasting or not and it's comfort rated at least the sleeping system um, below 30 degrees. So some of it might even be below 20 degrees and it's still, in my opinion, budget gear. So let's get into it. Oh my goodness, Emmett, you sent me a text message. Yes, you did. What did you say? Oh, yes, it is granite gear. Good call. All right, next category is best budget backpack. For me, the best budget backpack still, and it's been the best budget backpack for a very long time, is the Granite Gear Crown 60 backpack. It's the Crown 260, actually. And you can find this backpack sometimes for like $150 or even $120. Now, that may sound expensive to you if you're shopping at like a Walmart for a backpack, but this backpack is actually worth the purchase. It's durable. It's very well made. It is uh, 60 liters and it carries the gear really, really well. So when I used this backpack, I packed it out with about 35 pounds worth of gear and I hiked maybe 20 miles or so and it did great. And it's always the backpack that I recommend to like new people who are uh, starting out their backpacking adventures for budget stuff because it holds a ton of gear at 60 liters. It's got a ton of organization. It's got hip belt pockets on it. And this backpack weighs right in around two pounds. So certainly recommend this one. Check it out, links are in the description. Next up is the best budget pack liner. No, seriously, that's a category. All right, it's gonna be a garbage bag <laughs> or a trash compactor bag. All you do is you stick this inside of your backpack first, and then you fill this up with everything that you don't want to get wet. Sleeping bag, puffy jacket, any spare clothes that you're bringing, things like that and then you roll it up, tie it up, whatever you gotta do, and now your bag, your backpack is essentially waterproof. So best way to waterproof that bag, pack liner, uh, is a garbage bag or a trash compactor bag. All right, next up is the best budget backpacking app. Why is it a budget backpacking app? Well, because Onyx gave me a code uh, I think it's DB20. Uh, I put the link in the description below. If you look it up, uh, it'll take you over to Onyx's website. You get a 14 free, 14 day free trial, or you can just buy it and it's 20% off with my code, uh, but it's worth every penny. So you can track snow, you can check out snow reports, uh, weather, uh, slope angles, all of the um, higher end uh, app type stuff that a little more experienced people would do, but it's also super user friendly. And then it also shows you directions. Uh, it'll show you trails. You can look up trails. You see, you can see pictures of trails. You can see um, comments and all kinds of stuff from people who have been there, done that. And all of the um, comments aren't like, you know, random people like, hey, this is grandma who told you that the tra trail was super difficult. And you're like, you get there and you're like, well, this is not difficult at all. It's not unvetted information. Uh, these are all vetted people, vetted comments, and they are also owners of the Adventure Project. And so they pull a lot of their data from there as well. So that's why I love Onyx. So check out the description below. It's like 20 bucks or something like that, 23 bucks or whatever for my code. Worth it for every trip you would ever go on. Even like if you're gonna do some day hiking, you could totally do that with this app and it's, it's worth it. So best budget app for backpacking and even day hiking. Ooh, look at that, it's snowing. You see that? They got the little snow thing right now. All right, next category is the best budget sleeping bag. Um, I have a couple for you. First is the Kelty Cosmic Down 20. This is a bag that I've used for, gosh, several years. I've given them away. I've bought them and given them away. And it's always the bag that I recommend first to people who are just starting out or just want to upgrade that car camping bag, uh, that synthetic one to a down bag. I believe it's about 500 or 600 filled down. We'll put the specs on screen. It weighs about two and a half pounds or right around there. 
and uh, it's super warm. So the only thing I would say though is that it's comfort rated to about 30 to 32 degrees. So when the bag says 20 degrees, it's really rated for about 10 degrees, maybe 15 degrees if you're a cold sleeper. Okay, the other option that I've got for you is the Pre Optro Products Thermo Down 15 degree sleeping bag. This thing weighs 28 ounces, so under three pounds, has 600 fill down in it, and it is actually comfort rated to what they say that it is. They have an in-depth article on their website on how they rate their products. If you're a cold sleeper, they say, you may wanna add five, maybe seven degrees more on the bag than the 15 degrees. So I like bags that are rated right around 20 degrees because, um, a comfort rated right around 20 degrees because you know, you could use those almost four season. Uh, very rarely are you gonna be backpacking where the weather's gonna dip below 20 degrees. And if you are, obviously you can layer up and do some other things to combat that. But this bag, you can't beat the price on this thing for 145 bucks or whatever it is. And uh, you can also pack this thing down really small because it's a down bag. Next category, best budget sleeping pad. The best budget sleeping pad is gonna be a couple. Uh, the first one is not my favorite. Um, but it is bomb proof and it will take the bite out of the ground. It'll sort of do the job if you especially don't want to spend hardly any money whatsoever. And it's the Thermarest Z Light sleeping pad. It's a foam pad that's accordion style and it's as comfortable as it looks. <laughs> so at least you're not sleeping on rocks. The R value or the insulation value, the how warm it's gonna keep you is pretty low. I think it's right around maybe two. Um, so it's not really a winter pad at all, or even like a fringe season pad. This is probably more of like a summer type pad. It'll keep you semi-warm, but it'll keep the bite out of the ground. And yeah, it's a budget pad. So the next pad that I would tell you to purchase uh, is one that is an upgrade or sort of like a redesign this year, which I'm gonna tell you right now, I have not used this pad, although I did use the previous version of this pad. It's the Big Agnes Air Core Ultra. Now this pad, they're claiming has increased in R value to a 4.5. And the larger pad is gonna run you right at about a hundred bucks. And the old version was super comfortable. It was one of my favorite pads for being the most comfortable ever out there. Now it's a little bit heavier. It's gonna weigh like 25 or 28 ounces or something like that. But it's gonna give you a good night's sleep. And if you get all the other budget stuff that I'm telling you, your weight of your backpack is gonna be low enough that most people are gonna be able to manage carrying this type of a pad around. And for a hundred bucks, you can't beat it. So there is another pad that's right around a hundred bucks as well that I've recommended in the past. It's the Climate Insulated Static V Light Pad. Now this one isn't nearly as comfortable. The R value isn't nearly as good, but the price is gonna be a little bit less on this pad. Usually maybe 10, $20 more than the other pad that I just told you. So if you're like super tight on budget, uh, you might wanna look at that one as well. But these are, in my opinion, the best budget sleeping pads out there. All right, next category, best budget pillow. <laughs> it's this one right here. Well, actually, it's the new version of this pillow. This is the Trekology pillow. Uh, the new version has, um, it's the 2.0, and it's got some straps on it to basically hold it to your um, air mattress. And it's just a blow-up pillow. And this one may or may not have had tons of drool marks on it, but I swear they're not mine. <laughs> I've borrowed these out to like lots of people. <laughs> it's not my favorite pillow. I'm not a super huge fan of air pillows, but it's better than not having a pillow. Uh, so this is the best budget option out there. Another option that a lot of guys do is just basically take like their puffy jacket and put it in some sort of a stuff sack or maybe like a buff or something and then use that as a pillow. So you may not even have to buy a pillow. You could just sort of grab some clothes and sort of pile it up as a pillow. But if you don't want to do that, this is pretty lightweight, around three ounces, and it works really well for a budget pillow. All right, next category is the best budget quilt. So the best budget quilt, in my opinion, is going to be also from Perea Outdoor Products. It's going to be their Thermo Down 15 degree quilt. So this quilt is really wide at 56 inches. So you could use it in a hammock if you wanted to. You could use it uh, on the ground if you wanted to. Uh, about 55 inches or so is about what you want to uh, be able to lay over you and not have to worry about it coming up on the sides. And it only weighs a little bit over two pounds. So if you're a quilt person, you might wanna check out this quilt. Uh, they do have a 30 degree version that's gonna weigh a little bit less. Um, and they're both comfort rated to what they say that they are. All right, best budget backpacking tent. Next category. <laughs> this should be of no surprise. 
because I talk about it all the time. It's the Pre Outdoors Bryce one person tent. And this time we've got the poles to show you. But this thing weighs right in around three pounds, maybe a little bit less for what you see here. Actually, it's a little bit less than three pounds for what you see here. It's an awesome, fully freestanding tent double wall tent. It's about a one and a half person size, even though it says that it's a one person size. Super easy to set up. And we've had this out on tons and tons of backpacking trips and it's still going strong. This tent actually comes with a ground cloth for the price that it is and 12 stakes. And not only is it like a ground cloth, but it's a fast fly ground cloth, which means that it's got grommets in the corners to be able to put the poles of the tent in first so that you can set up the rain fly first and then go ahead and set the tent portion up underneath it if it's raining. So that's super, super nice. Now, I don't really bring that with me because it's a little bit extra weight. But um, yeah, this is a great tent. Highly recommend this. You're, you're not going to beat this as a a fully freestanding, fully featured tent out there. Now there is another budget option on the market that's out there. Full disclosure, I have never used it, but I'm gonna tell you about it because I know tons of people who have used it and everybody says that it's a great tent, so I'm just gonna mention it. It's the Lanshan one-person trekking pole tent. I'll put a, a link in the description below for it, uh, but it's essentially a very lightweight trekking pole tent, and I believe, I believe it's double wall. If I'm wrong, we'll put that up on the screen. <laughs> but a lot of people swear by it. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than this, but it's gonna be lighter weight, and you can use your trekking poles to set it up. All right, next category is the best budget cook pot. It is going to be the stainless steel Stanley pot. This is like the Stanley Adventure Kit. It actually comes with a couple of plastic cups, which I no longer have, but it is a bomb proof. I believe this is about a 700 or 800 mil pot, which is really nice. Great handle on it, locks like this or this and bomb proof. You literally like drop this off of a 10 story building. It's gonna barely dent. A Little bit heavy, but it will be something that you will last, that would last for like an eternity. All right, next up is the best budget backpacking spoon. It's the same as the expensive version that I told you about last week. It's the Ozark Trail Walmart spoon. And I actually used it this past week and it probably still has food on it, so I apologize. But love this thing. I talk about it all the time. Long handled, flexible, 88 cents. Very difficult to find because it's always sold out. Or, or you could just use like a, like a, go to like Dairy Queen and get a long handled spoon or something. Or like a, some other place that has Sundays. Oh, Sundays. I love Sundays. But you can go get a, ice cream sundae right before your big long trek and use that for a spoon if you want to. That's super budget. Next up is the best budget freeze dried meals. All right, you ready for this? It's gonna be the tried and true mountain house meals from Walmart or Amazon or wherever. They're literally sold like everywhere. And they are budget. They're decently good. At least they're freeze dried. What I don't like about them is they're not the best tasting. Um, but if you're super hungry, you're gonna eat it. And the calories are really low on it. It's like 400, 500 calories for uh, a two serving bag. And they're filled with just fillers and tons of sodium. So for that reason, I love the Pinnacle meals, but they're really expensive. They're probably twice the cost of a mountain house meal. But if you're only gonna go backpacking once or twice a year, I mean, seriously, just spend the extra couple bucks and get the good food because you'd be glad you did when you're out there. Tell you what, because uh, if I go backpacking with you, I'm going to have the pinnacle foods, and you're going to be looking at me wishing that you had them too, and I won't share them with you because I don't want your mountain house meal. Next category is the best budget water carry. The best way to carry your water that's super budget is also the best way to carry it, even if it's expensive, is a smart water bottle. They're just super cheap. It's a bottle of water that you buy at a gas station, so just use those. Extremely lightweight, very durable, and it's it comes with water comes with water. Next category is the best budget headlamp. So this one is an easy one. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it at Walmart. You can find it pretty much anywhere. It's the Energizer headlamp. So this thing costs like maybe 15 bucks. Uh, it's got a red light. It's got variable brightness. It's pretty bright for what it is. I think it's like 250 or 300 lumens. And it comes with the batteries. Now, 
the only thing it doesn't have is a lockout function. Uh, that is kind of annoying, but the way to easily overcome that is just to take one of the batteries, flip it around, and now it won't turn on in your pocket. And then when you want to use it, just flip the battery right back around and turn it on and you are good to go. So if you don't want to spend a, money, spend a ton of money on a headlamp, uh, I highly recommend you check that headlamp out. All right, next category is the best budget footwear. So the best budget footwear is simply to not go out and buy new footwear. Footwear? Footwear. <laughs> See, all you need to do is make sure that your shoe or boot is worn in, super comfortable, and has good tread on it. If your shoes have that at home or your boots have that at home, that's what you should be wearing. So use what you've already got. Next category is the best budget GPS. There isn't one. They're all expensive. Next category is the best budget backpacking trowel. Yes, this is a thing. Uh, if you don't want to spend any money, just use your trekking pole or find a stick. Or for the longest time, I would literally like just kick a hole with my shoe, like dig a hole out <laughs> with, with like the heel of my shoe. But I did find a trowel online. I just was searching for it. I haven't even used it yet, but I could tell you it's probably gonna work. Probably gonna work because it's super, super solid. It's this uh, co co Coglins, <laughs> if that's how you pronounce it, trowel. And it only weighs like two ounces. And this thing was like $3 on Amazon. Delivered, which is crazy. And it's super bright orange. So if you go pooping in the dark and you drop your trowel, you can find your trowel. Next up is the best budget camp shoes. All right, I've got two of them for you. One is Crocs. Uh, those are fairly inexpensive or at least find generic versions of the Crocs if you can't find like the regular ones that aren't under like 40 bucks. Or you can go to like a Walmart and get those like 99 cent flip flops. Those do great as well. And they're super, super lightweight. All right, next up is the best budget backpacking puffy jacket. It is the Decathlon Trek 100 Four Claths Puffy Jacket. <laughs> I don't even know exactly what they call this thing, but it's got the word Four Claths in it, Trek 100. It's all those things. But I've made lots of videos on this jacket. It's 800 fill down. Most of it's duck down. I think there's some goose down in there. And it's very similar in style and even weight to the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. And it has just as much down in it. It will keep you just as warm in it. Uh, and I think it might even be a little bit more durable. It weighs like an ounce and a half more than the uh, the regular version of the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. But this thing only costs like 80, 90 bucks. So, uh, and you can find it at Walmart as well. And sometimes you can find it really, really cheap at Walmart. Uh, last time I posted something about this, people were telling me that they found this backpack, <laughs> backpack? <laughs> they found this jacket at Walmart for like 50 bucks. So, and I know some of you guys are gonna comment and be like, oh, I found this uh, down jacket on Amazon for like $30, it's amazing or whatever. And it might be a great jacket, but it's not gonna be 800 fill down. And 800 fill down is gonna mean that your jacket is gonna be really, really lightweight because the feather inside of the jacket is a puffier feather. Therefore, they need less feathers inside of the jacket to achieve the same loft. So that's why it's lighter weight. So when you see fill power, the higher the number, the higher quality of the down, which means that it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. So uh, awesome jacket, totally recommend that you get this one if you're looking for a brand new jacket. Next category, best budget mid-layer. It's gonna be something that you already own. I'm just gonna say that straight up. <laughs> Preferably something synthetic or uh, wool or um, uh, like a merino wool or something like that. Um, but make sure that you're at least bringing some sort of a mid-layer because it could get cold and you definitely want to layer up. Next category is the best budget rain jacket. Hands down, the best budget rain jacket out there is this one here. It is the Frog Togs rain jacket. It is as durable as it looks. <laughs> Although I personally know people that have used one of these jackets for the entire Appalachian Trail through hike, like over 2,000 miles, which I don't know how they did it. Absolute miracle. Uh, but it is not the most durable. So like here, the zipper's coming apart. But this whole rain suit, because it comes with pants as well, only costs like $20. And the jacket uh, is like six ounces. So 
super, super ultralight. And the other thing that I really do like about this is that it's really uh, baggy. So you could use this easily as a hard shell over like a puffy jacket. And it's the kind of thing that like, if you are sitting around the fire at night and uh, you don't want to ruin your expensive jacket or whatever you're wearing, you can throw this on. And if it gets embers on it or something like that from the fire, it's not going to be that big of a deal because you're putting holes in something that's kind of cheap. So um, certainly recommend you check out the, the Frog Togs rain jacket, the ultralight rain suit. Um, I'll put a link in the description below for this one. Next up is the best budget backpacking chair. So I searched on Amazon and I'm just going to tell you straight up, all you got to do is type in backpacking chair on Amazon and there will be like a hundred chairs that come up and almost Every one of them is going to be made overseas, somewhere like in China, and it's going to be around two pounds, and I even found them as low as $22, which means <laughs> you could potentially save, what is that, $128 right now off of the Helinox Chair Zero if you're willing to risk a cheaper chair on Amazon, but also uh, carry an extra pound of weight because the Helinox Chair Zero is, an, is a pound less, but that's $128 to save a pound. Are you kidding me? So if you're only gonna go once or twice a year, that may be the way to go. So um, make sure you read the reviews. I just don't have one, but I'm just gonna let you know that they are out there. I don't wanna tell you a specific chair to use and then you buy it and it's terrible. I just know that there's a ton of them on there right now and you can get them super cheap. All right, next up is the best budget way to carry food. <laughs> I almost said best budget backpack again. Uh, it's gonna be a couple things. You could either use, a garbage bag, which I, it works. I've seen people do it. You're only gonna get away with like a couple days with a garbage bag, throwing your food in here, and then you've gotta be able to hang it up in a tree somehow. So it is an option. Although if you get a hole in this thing, it's, you want it to be at least waterproof so that way, or very water resistant so that way, overnight if it rains on your food, your food's not gonna get soaking wet. The other option uh, that I've seen people do is just use like the stuff sack that comes with their sleeping bag. Keep in mind that most of these stuff sacks aren't gonna be waterproof, but it will at least do the job. But I've got one more for you that's like super budget, and it is quote unquote waterproof or extremely water resistant, and it comes with in like a three pack. Uh, and this is what I used um, way back in the day when I first started backpacking um, as sort of my ditty bag, my stuff sack, and then also like a, a way to carry some stuff I just didn't want to get wet. It's these like generic dry bags, and I'll put a link into the description below to a set of them on Amazon. They are a different brand than these, but I'm pretty sure they're the exact same thing. These ones are made by a company called Gecko Brands. Comes in a three pack, they're only $10 for the three pack, and they're different liter sizes. Um, the ones on Amazon, which I'm pretty sure are the same thing, come in a two, a four, and an eight liter bag size. So um, I was able to fit like maybe three days worth of food in here, and you just, you know, it's a, it's a dry bag. You roll it up, snap it, and you can hang this in a tree. It works great. You can use one as a ditty bag if you want to. You can use another one to put either more food in it or, I don't know, your puffy jacket or something in there if you don't want it to get wet. Or a really small backpacking quilt or something. So, great deal on these. They totally work. And it's not that big of a deal that they're these super ugly colors because it's easy to tell what's what inside of your backpack. Next up is the best budget first aid kit. Now, this is something I would not chintz on because you don't wanna mess around with a first aid kit and get it out there and it's just garbage stuff. So I'm gonna recommend the one that I used uh, for the past couple years. Uh, it's the Adventure Medical Kit 0.5. Spend the extra couple bucks and get a good medical kit. I recommend that one to people because it's just a basic medical kit for most people in most situations out there. Or the other option is, is you could just get a Ziploc bag and make your own med kit. You've probably got Band-Aids and other stuff laying around at home, so just use the stuff you've already got. All right, next category is the best budget multi-tool. So in the last video, I mentioned a multi-tool that I love now. It's the Leatherman Squirts PS4. It's pretty expensive though. It's like $50, $60 or something like that. But you can find this one sometimes for like 10 bucks on Amazon, but it's right around between 10 and like 15 bucks. It's the Swiss Army Classic SD. And I've got a little piece of paracord wrapped around this one because this one actually belongs to my son for when he comes on backpacking trips with me. Uh, so it, he doesn't lose it. Uh, but it comes with a knife. It comes with a scissors. It comes with a file and a little flathead screwdriver on it. And then it also comes with tweezers if you gotta pull off ticks or something like that. And then it also uh, comes with a little toothpick, which can also be helpful to uh, 
get rid of ticks if you have ticks or you have mountain house in your teeth. And then they come in a billion different colors, which is kind of cool if you are like to personalize your backpacking gear. Uh, but I like the brighter colored stuff because if I lose it, it's easier to find if it's a bright color. Next up is the best budget trekking poles. Now I mentioned this in a video last week and uh, it's gonna beat out an older best trekking pole, which you're gonna find a lot of people talking about the older one online. You're gonna find a lot of people talking about the uh, Cascade Mountain carbon fiber trekking poles. And those are great trekking poles. They're snap lock trekking poles. Uh, they weigh maybe eight, nine ounces a, a pole, and they're about 60 bucks or $61 is what I found them for on Amazon. But if you wanna spend $9 more and save yourself like literally, uh, let's see, probably five to seven ounces uh, off of trekking poles, uh, I would recommend these here. These are the Fizen trekking poles. These are twist lock poles, and these are supposedly the lightest trekking poles in the world, can you see that, that are aluminum. So they're the Compact 3. I'll put a link in the description for these, but we've had these out on a bunch of different uh, backpacking trips and they've done great. It's got EVA foam here, nice handle, and uh, it also has the carbide tip on here, if you could see that. So uh, they should last you quite some time. All right, next up is the best budget water filter. I got a couple of them for you. One's a little bit more budget than the other one, but they're both ones that I would use no matter what. Um, first off is the Sawyer uh, Mini. Uh, this one's okay. Um, it doesn't have that great of a flow rate, but it, it will definitely do the job. And it will screw on the top of a plastic water bottle, so um, it just is an easy way to uh, filter water. But I would just recommend that you go out, and uh, this one's like, weighs like maybe 1.9 ounces, 1.8 ounces, ounces, something like that. Just get the extra ounce and uh, you know buy this one. It's the uh, Sawyer Squeeze. This is gonna last you an eternity. It is also um, better flow rate, and um, they also give 90% of their profits away to uh, people who need clean water. So that's why I love them. So I'll link a video in the description below so you can check out what they do. We made a whole video on that topic. Uh, the other thing that I always recommend, even if you are um, looking in the budget realm for backpacking, is also not only get a water filter, but have some redundancy and get this here. This is the potable or potable aqua tabs. Um, these are just germicidal tablets that you can put in water, wait a couple minutes, and then it will make the water safe to drink. It's not gonna filter the water, it's not going to make it, uh, it's not gonna take the, the debris out of it essentially, but you can um, get rid of the debris if you want to, by the way, a little bit of a tip is you can use a piece of clothing, uh, maybe a t-shirt or something, and pour the water through the t-shirt into a bottle, and that will at least help get rid of debris if you have to use something like this, so you don't have to like drink <laughs> clean dirt or something. <laughs> so. These are always a great idea to keep around. All right, last but not least is the best budget way to inflate a sleeping pad. Okay, obviously use your lungs, right? You're like, well, okay, I just fill it up with my lungs, right? Yeah, well, you definitely for sure. But if you buy the budget sleeping pad that I told you about, the Big Agnes one, I'm pretty sure, and I will make sure we put this on the screen if I'm wrong, it comes with a, a pump sack. Now, up front, Big Agnes pump sacks are not my favorite. They're kind of a waste in my opinion. They do the job of you not having to use your lungs, so that's good. But, uh, yep, here it is. This is finally in my hands. It is the Flextail uh, Pump, tiny Flextail, whatever, I'll put the name on the screen. <laughs> Flextail Gear <laughs> Tiny Pump 2. Uh, this is the upgraded version to the other pump. Um, and they gave me a coupon code, Becker15. How about that? You get like 15% off. I'll put a link in the description of all their stuff that they uh, sell there, which they got a lot of really cool stuff. I didn't I had no idea that they had. Um, but the upgrade is it finally comes with a way to actually hang it easily um, inside of your tent. So if you really wanted to, I think you could just disconnect this and like loop it around something. Yep, just like that. I don't know if it's meant to do that, but you can do it. And then uh, it's got the still the built-in light if you hold it down. Check that out. Pretty cool. And then also it's got a ton of these little attachments that you can put on here uh, as well. And that will you know, fill up different types of sleeping pads. There's a bunch of things that attach to this, not just this one. And then also comes with, or it doesn't come with, but they have on their website diffusers to uh, make the lantern a little bit more uh, light diffused so that you can fill up like a bigger area of light. It's not just sort of coming out the top. So that's kind of cool too. So anyway, my opinion, these are the, 
like a no-brainer to get. They're awesome. They are a little noisy. It's not that big of a deal, all right? You can sit through me having to blow up my sleeping pad for two minutes, all right? Because that way I don't have to use my lungs to do it and get all dizzy. Nobody likes that. And you know what? If you come with me, I'll even let you use it too so that way you don't have to complain about how loud it is. It's a little noisy. Okay, I had so many people commenting on the last video to me about getting them some budget gear ideas. Uh, that's why we made this video this week. I really hope it helps you guys out. I hope it gets you out backpacking and you don't have to think that everything has to cost tons of money because it doesn't. So leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything else out there that you think is budget or if you love it, or you hate the stuff that I've showed you, whatever it is, and we will see you guys on the next one. All right, that's it. I don't know why I clapped at the end. <laughs>